So let me tell you something about myself. As far as I remember, I always wanted to be a badass. I always had the heart of a warrior. A childhood star to a gangbanger, drug dealer. The rap star and actor. It's all the same concrete, a hustler didn't fall. So go ahead and ball while my stock. An experience where most kids can only dream of. No, really, I'm serious. I'm walking away from it all to ride with one of the oldest 1% motorcycle clubs. Life of a 1%er. Yeah, I'm on Big Cassie Lawn. Hey riders, this is James Hollywood Machikari with Motorcycle Madhouse. The 35th annual Chicago Motorcycle Show and Swamp Meet is coming up on February 2nd and 3rd at the Pheasant Room Resort in St. Charles. There will be vendors from all over selling new and used motorcycle parts from Harley Davidson, Metric Sports, or any hard to find parts, not to mention bikes. There will also be unbelievable deals on leather apparel. Patches sewn while you wait, calendar girls, novelty items, and much more. The custom bike show is back with a total of 5,000 cash and trophy awards. There will also be tattoo contests and a live band. Don't miss the 35th annual Chicago Motorcycle Show and Swap Meet on February 2nd and 3rd at the Pleasant Run Resort in St. Charles. The party starts on Saturday from 10 to 7 and on Sunday from 10 to 3. For more info, call 800-800-634 or visit ChicagoMotorcycleSwap.com. Tickets on sale now. Rock on. And welcome everyone to Motorcycle Madhouse. It is Tuesday and it is freezing up here in uh, Illinois. Let me tell you, how you guys doing in the chat room? All oh, my good regulars are out there. Ironhead and Biohazard, Robert and John and everybody else. JR's out there. And today we're going to talk about Harley Davidson has done lost its damn mind. Let me tell you, they have flown and they're the cuckoos out there now. They are crazy, let me tell you. But uh, first, uh, we got a new segment coming up. Uh, when you call in, we're going to do something fun again. It is called the Spin the Wheel, where we're going to be giving you guys all kinds of prizes and stuff like that. We'll be giving you ebooks, uh, personal signed copies of New Age uh, Biking and Brotherhood. And we also got uh, t shirts coming at the end of this month, and Dirty Sand Productions are going to be making those. But uh, let's get to our topic today Harley Davidson. You need to go get on some Prozac, some Ativan, or something like that, because they just released its information on the Livewire, and let me read this article to you real quick, and we'll get into it a little bit more. Uh, the article came out, uh, <laughs> it's big release, as they call big debut. It's been a long ride and a long way to Harley Davidson's first all-electric motorcycle, but it is finally coming in August of 2019. Personally, they can keep it. Anyway, on Monday at uh, 2019, Harley-Davidson announced that it has started taking pre-orders for the Live Wire, the electric bike in, uh, unveiled in 2014. And here's what the genius Einstein at uh, CEO, Matt Levetich, has to say. We're at a historic junction in the evolution of mobility. 
Basically, he's saying he's taking the company way out to left field. And Harley Davidson's at the forefront. Now, you know, he's kind of lying right there because the Zero has been at the forefront of electric motorcycles forever. Uh, they showed off the prototype uh, in uh, Las Vegas. Now, the dealerships will be picking up the live wire in 2019, and you will never guess, never guess, the price tag for a bike, if you want to call it that, that only goes 110 miles on a charge. They are charging. You want to get this? And this is the reason why Harley Davidson can't get its shit together, can't get its sales together, and everybody's leaving the other uh, manufacturers. $29,799. Yes, I said that. $29,799. They're going to charge for a bike that can only go 110 miles on a charge. Oh, my God, Marona Mia. Let me tell you. Here, and you know what's even worse? Look at this. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I got to show you this real quick. This is what you're getting for $29,000. Introducing the most connected motorcycle experience ever. With cellular telematics and cloud connectivity, it's a dashboard in your pocket. So you can check your bike's status from anywhere in the world. With integrated cellular and GPS. So you get notifications in real time. And stolen vehicle assistance. Keeping you in the know wherever you may be. All with seamless Bluetooth integration. So you can lean in and enjoy the ride. We have now officially entered the Tron Age. Holy cow. $29,000 for that to get all the goodies on your phone and stuff. Where are we going in the biker lifestyle? Let me tell you. Now, Harley goes and says, um, the Harley gives riders the ride of their life, I guess, for 110 uh, miles. Uh, it goes from zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. 100% of the motor torque is available instantly. I heard it sounds like a jet engine. Uh, it can be charged from a standard household outlet uh, using a level one charger, I guess, uh, uh, power. Or users can also visit any public level three uh, DC fast charge station. Can you tell me where those are at? You know, do they got the structure out there, the infrastructure to make something like this happen with the electric car? Uh, uh, oh, my God. Anyway, riders will be able to locate charging stations through an app. Well, first, you got to have charging stations. Uh, dealerships that sell the electric bikes will have stations. There you go. They're going to be out there. Harley Davidson are getting into the electric charging stuff. I wonder how much they're going to charge per charge on this electric bike here. Uh, it's going to be called HD Connect here. The app also lets users check bike vitals like battery charge status, see the bike's location on the map. That don't make sense right there. They're going to be able to see it on a map while they're riding the damn thing. And get security alerts if it's been bumped, tampered with, or moved. GPS-enabled stolen vehicle tracking is also available. Uh, for customers new to Harley, I guess, the live wire promises to be a super easy to use. Harley's let its riders get instantaneous power the moment they twist the throttle. <laughs> My God, where are we going? <laughs> what are you got? What do you guys think about this, man? Now, what's even worse? This is even worse. Look at this right here. Yep. <laughs> We're going back to 1903. <laughs> they are, uh, these are some of their new model of, of electric bikes that are coming out. Uh, I guess they ditched the V twin and stuff like that. You know, they ditched us in uh, 1994 with the rub invasion. I guess they really haven't learned what the hell they're doing over there at the factory. And we are wondering why. 
They are losing all kinds of freaking customers. Jesus, are you kidding me? <laughs> so let's see how it's, uh, Dominic, how you doing, buddy? I appreciate that you sent me that uh, donation, man. That uh, Really appreciate that. Uh, it, it looks like a mountain bike, these damn things. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so... You guys call in. What do you guys think of this new bike, man? What in the heck is Harley Davidson thinking? You know, it, yeah, I had the tramps loading up my bike today, uh, the Fat Boy. They're going to put on uh, some 18-inch A-pangers, doing a couple other stuff to it. And it was awesome seeing it getting loaded up like that. But this shit right here is... Uh, Wow. <laughs> do you do you have to wear those little tights or something to be considered a biker now or something on one of their bikes? You know, I know they want to capture the urban biker. I get it. I get they want to catch the younger crowd. I get it. But do they have to whore themselves out like this? You know, when I seen them models, I was like, well, God damn, anybody can go right now and get you a Schwinn and put you on a little freaking engine with a one-gallon tank, and it's like, oh, my God, here, we got to call him. I got to answer this. You're on air, buddy. How you doing? Hey, Hollywood. This is uh, Paul Stacker out of Phoenix, man. Paul, how you doing, my man? All right, I got, yeah, I'm sitting there watching this thing, and I, I've only got one question. What the fucking fuck, man? It is messed up, ain't it? Holy shit, I seen this. I was like, where the hell is Harley Davidson going? I was like, has it, it, it's already got away from its core business with the blue-collar worker, but come on. Well, if I keep this up, I can tell you where they're going away. Well, I get it. They want to be able to, uh, you know, get the younger crowd and stuff. But is this the way to do it? You know, it seems like they're selling out again. Well, here's the thing, Hollywood. I've talked to a lot of the younger guys, and there's no way they would even touch anything like that. They'd rather go to a cross rocket than one of those 1903-looking fucking things, man. Uh, don't it look like 1903, like they're trying to go back in time or something to try to reinvent themselves? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, they haven't got a clue. <laughs> it is so messed up. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Good God, it's like, it's like I, yeah, I got to actually drink like four or five beers, a couple of shots of bourbon, and take a hit of weed just to get that thought on my fucking head right now. <laughs> now, what do you think about the price point? Now, they want $29,000 for this damn thing, and it only goes half the distance of the Zero. Now, the Zero, uh, with its uh, extended range package, is fifteen grand, and it, uh, it's unreal. I, I don't get it. How do, that's, they're pricing themselves out of the damn market. Okay, so look here. I my 16 Heritage gets almost 300 miles to a tank of gas. If they think that anybody's going to want to go pay almost $300,000 $300, uh, $30, to only go 110 miles to a fill-up, they're out of their fucking minds. Oh, man, they're just plain crazy, man. They really are. Uh, you know, I know we got to start embracing technology and stuff. I just think it's way out of line, if you ask me. Well, here's the thing. They're, there's a, you know, they're crossing the line here. And right now, they're, they're, they put it out there, and I don't think they're going to really recover from this one. I honestly don't. No, I think they need uh, new leadership over at the top and all that stuff. But uh, we got uh, other calls coming in. But first, we're going to do a prize thing here with you. Since you called in, we're going to do a spin in the wheel. Make sure you give me your email address and get a hold of me. Info at... Uh, Info at InsaneThrottleBikerNews.com. And for calling in, you got a new age of uh, Biking and Brotherhood ebook, my man. All right, good deal. Rock and roll, man. Make sure you get me that email address, and I'll get it out to you. All right, sure thing. I'll catch you later. Rock on. Thanks for calling. You're on air. 
Hey, how are you? What's going on in Black World? Hey, what's up, buddy? Make sure you turn off, uh, turn it down in the background. Yeah. Alright. I got you. No, I just wanted to call up. I was been watching your show. I've been Dude, this uh, Harley electric bike is ridiculous. Can you imagine what the old timers are thinking right now? You know, our Vietnam vets and all that stuff. They're like, where the hell? Is you might as well go to a Toys R Us to get something like this. They're probably calling you a pussy for even thinking about riding it. <laughs> and, what, <laughs> and what about, you know what? Tommy just brought it up, too. What do you think about the way it looks? It, it, this thing, if you're my age or older, you know what the Tron was, the Tron, oh, yeah. the Tron movie back in the 70s. This shit looks just like it. Oh, yeah. What they're trying to do currently is go with that whole retro style like the cars did. Like they're trying to bring back the old Mustang styles, the old Corvettes, and all that other shit. They're trying to be like them, but thinking that it's going to oh, we're going to do it like this, be retro, but yet it helps us fit, I mean, environmental friendly bullshit or whatever. But yet we're going to rake you in the ass to do it and probably be stranded on the side of the road because you don't know how to charge a bike or some bullshit like that, you know? Right. Well, you know what? It, it, it is funny that Harley-Davidson is starting to put the electric charging station at, a, at its dealership which is awesome, you know, that they're going to try to get the infrastructure together. But then you got to wonder how much, you know, you're going to go with the charge. So are they going to start getting you on the back well, end too? Right. I mean, they're not making uh, the money selling the bikes anymore like they used to. they got to try something. All they're doing is selling their merchandise, really. Right, and it's already, uh, you know, bad enough that they're a t-shirt, uh, you know, in a clothing store. Thanks about for that, Long Rider. Really appreciate that, buddy. But, uh, you know, I get it. They're, they got to start moving to other types of sales and shit like that. But what they're doing now, man, they're going to alienate everybody. In my personal opinion, I was like, as I was seeing my fat boy uh, leaving the driveway today for uh, the tramps to work on it, I'm sitting here thinking, well, that's the last damn Harley I'm ever going to own. <laughs> I hear you. Nah, I just think it's ridiculous. But this whole entire, you know, with the and I saw you put up there for it. You can locate your bike anywhere on the planet, blah, 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 through the palm of your hand. Well, my bike better be next to me, for one. And that's just another way for Big Brother to keep an eye on you. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know what? I got other calls coming in. Let's get to your prize segment for calling in. We're taking a spin at the wheel right now. Make sure you get me your email address to get your prize out and you get the Iron Order ebook, The Year That Changed the Motorcycle Club Scene, man. Hell yeah. Awesome. Well, with you, Hollywood. You too, man. Thanks for calling in, buddy. You're on air. Hey there, boss. I uh, just wanted to comment on something you said just a few seconds ago about the blue collar worker in Harley. Oh, it seems man. to me that. Oh, go ahead, boss. I, you know, go ahead, man. Uh, you know what? That's one of my uh, favorite subjects to talk about is the blue collar worker because, you know what? Back in the mid 90s, that's when Harley Davidson left them. Well, yeah, but the thing of what it is, is they've never had love for the blue collars, even from their inception. The whole time they were selling motorcycles to the military, they were also looking to branch into the police departments. They wanted the genteel biker. It's kind of like, um, how do you say it? You know, every, you know, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. That's what Harley wanted to go for until the rebel image took over back in the 60s, and they found a way to make money off of it. Right, right. They've never, they've never cared about the guy on the other side of the tracks. And, and we, you know, the thing about it is in the 90s, now they, they were at least honest about it. They never really cared about blue collars. We cared about them way the hell more than they ever did us. And what do you think? You know what? I find it, you know, because me, I'm not one of them guys. I don't got a Harley tattoo anywhere on me. 
But uh, I'm not one of them that, okay, you have to have a Harley to be a biker, crap. You know, yeah, I've owned them all, you know, most of my life. But I've also owned Victories. I've owned Hondas for backup bikes and stuff like that. And it seems like, you know, for all those out there that, uh, you know, bitch and complain about the Jap bikes, they actually got a better freaking product in my eyes, some of them. Well, they do, actually. And I've had Harleys and I've had Metrics. And I'll be honest with you, I've gotten just as many compliments off of a jet bike riding like a Vulcan or something than I, uh, than I have with Harley. For the layman out there, they can't tell the difference. You take that logo off the tank, you can't tell a Harley from anything else except for maybe the rib side. Right. Well, you're exactly right. Now, do you think that the diehard Harley guys are going to finally say, hey, Enough's enough, man, for trying to, you know, make excuses for the company. Hey, they're global. They got to make money, blah, blah, blah. But coming out with a product like this, man, it's like a kick in the nuts. It's going to take the club, you know, it's going to take the clubs to do it. Um, they're the ones, whether, you know, I'm pretty sure they know about it. Everybody follows their trends on things like everything from apparel to uh, bikes. Right. You know, the most progressive, some of the most progressive clubs out there, and I might get some heat for this. Or a lot of the black dominated clubs are the integrated ones. Right. A lot of those guys, man, they don't have a lot of money in their pockets. So you'll see them riding Hondas. You'll see them riding Kawasaki. Well, you're exactly, you, know, you're, you're, you are exactly right on that because uh, BD over at Black Sabbath, they accept any uh, motorcycle. And it's funny you say that because even uh, Sonny even came out and said he can't stand the damn Harley. If it was up to him, he'd be riding something else. Yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things. I mean, Harley was a good product at the time, and, it, you know, technically it still is. Right. If you're looking at it from a blueprint standpoint, but the problem is they're going to get to a point where there's not, you know, people these days don't have the scratch that they probably did back in, you know, when Harleys were more reasonably priced. You know, why, I mean, in my area, I'm out in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Out in my area, you might get a sports car on the low end used for four grand. A lot of these kids out here that are in their 20s and stuff, most of them are riding crotch rockets because you can get a freaking crotch rocket for $1,000 used. And they're better looking. Some of them, man, they're fast-ass bikes. You know, I love a crotch really? rocket, let me tell you. <laughs> I just don't ride. I just, I just don't ride one because you know the last one I had, I had a katana, and when I hit 160 and I started to see you know that tunnel vision, I said, "Ah, screw this! I'm gonna kill myself. I gotta get rid of it." Yeah, for real. I never liked the look of them myself, but I can understand why these kids are buying them. If I can go out and get two wheels for a grand when I don't have a bike at all, you know, I'm not gonna go to some guy's house and you know show out four or five grand for something on hardly the low end. Right. Now, you know what? Uh, you know, we had somebody suggest in the chat room that they're going to try to go retro and stuff like that. They don't need to go back to 1903 to go retro, man. Maybe they need to bring a panhead a production panhead back or a knucklehead or something like that. Because what they're trying to push right now, and I know they're supposed to be coming out with uh, more models and shit, <laughs> it ain't going to do it within the biker community, especially the diehards. <laughs> Well, they definitely need to go back to basics. I mean, it was kind of a kick in the nuts when they got rid of Dyna, the Dyna model. That was basically, if you couldn't afford some monstrous two-wheel rolling couch with a GPS and a cup holder, that's what you had. You could build on it as you went. But they decided they wanted to go full on, and, you know, most of the, some of these guys riding around this city in these new Harleys, it's almost ridiculous. They may as well be riding um, gold wings. Right. Well, you know what? You, there's nothing wrong with comfort, but well, you know, yeah, you can't even kill a gold wing, man. You'd go back if I had to go cross country, it'd be on a gold wing. But you know what? Uh, I really think because you know, in the 1970s, especially the CB 750s with uh, the old chops and stuff like that, I think the biggest thing that killed Honda was that damn commercial. You know. What is it? The only nice people ride Hondas or some crap like that. I think that was the biggest marketing mistake that Honda could make, you know, was back then. Because if they didn't do that move, I think they'd have a whole big freaking, uh, you know, chunk of Harley's uh, big bike market. Oh, they could have. I mean, they make a good product for all the jokes out there. 
it's still a good bike. I mean, you can make them loud, you can make them sexy, you can do whatever the hell you want with them. Right. Well, you know, but those, those I, are things. Motorcycle design can only go so far. Right. Right. Well, you know what? I had a CB. I got a throw you guys a picture of what i actually had a cb 750 engine turned it into a long range you know a long chop and all that type of stuff and i think that had to be one of the most fun bikes i was ever on was that cb 750 chopper and it looked good and you know got the broads and uh you know when i just looked at the story today i was like hey, come on where are we going are we either getting that too much pc or is the technology where us older guys just got to start accepting it? I don't think we have to accept it. I think there has to be a pushback here. I mean, you know, if you want to go out to the Harley dealer and you want to pay, you know, money, you want to pay the same amount that you would pay for a brand new full size pickup truck for a bike, then the fool, you know, the more the fool you are. Right. So when they start, you know, when people start coming to their lots for anything other than parts, they're going to take notice of it. Right, exactly. <laughs> you got that right. Now, what do you think about this CEO, man? I think he's done so much damage to Harley Davidson. He's an man. asshole. It's it's irreversible. He's an asshole. He's I guarantee you he's never ridden before. He's never even sat on a bike for a picture. He's just he's looking at the bottom line, which is fine. I get it. A corporation needs to make money, but at the same time, he's pretty much giving the finger anybody out there when they killed certain cheaper lines and they're deciding to go all out. He doesn't, you know, he's a product of the 90s, basically. Mm. He doesn't want the fucking guy with dirty jeans in his garage. He doesn't want the club member. He just wants some asshole who freaking fixes teeth or fixes, does surgery on somebody's kneecap to come in and drop a load of money on it. Right, exactly. And I don't know, you know, personally, you'd have to be a fool to spend thirty thousand dollars on this thing, it only goes one hundred and ten miles. When you can get the zero, that for half the price, a lot better bike and a lot more range. So basically, what you're doing is paying for a dying name. If somebody showed up to my workplace that I work with and showed me a picture of that damn thing and said they were thinking of buying it, I would tell I would take them on the Facebook Marketplace or something and show them a freaking Vulcan or something for twenty five hundred and barely any miles on it. Oh yeah, you yeah, can it's get not an Harley, and I would tell them no one's going to notice the difference. Exactly, you know the only well, you know by the horn uh, cover and uh, the air cleaners. That's about all you know if you're a civilian if you don't know what to look for. No, and if they had club, you know they had club dreams, I would show them other clubs and that don't care about that bullshit. Right, right. Now, do you, you think know, I, uh, they're going to move towards freaking uh, these scooters now, too? You think they're going to get into scooters? I think they will. I think they'll do anything if they think it'll sell. Man. We're talking about a company that has no problem selling you a $500 fake leather jacket and a $60 T-shirt with a city name on it. it, it, it Harley Davidson has become the kiss of the motorcycle world. <laughs> I love it. Kiss of the motorcycle room. Got that right. <laughs> you know, before I came on air today, you know, I was watching some old vintage YouTube stuff with, you know, the old rallies and stuff, you know, early 90s and uh, late 80s. And I can't believe just how freaking messed up things have got. Maybe it's uh, we're falling into that one thing where our parents said, uh, you know, it, you know, thought one way and then uh, next thing, you know, the rebellion of the kids. But uh, this I just see as a downfall. I cannot see Harley breaking into this market. No, but, you know, they may break, well, they tried it before, I think. They, they, they've, uh, and they failed miserably. Um it does, that doesn't mean they won't attempt it again. Right. If they think the time is right, they're definitely going to do it. But, you know, with kids out there buying cheap-ass cross rockets and stuff, I doubt they're going to freaking make much headway. If they got the money, you know, at least a grand in their pocket, they're not going to go pay premium price for a scooter. Exactly. You know what? You're right on point with that. You know, scooters don't get guys laid, and these young kids have, you know, hard dicks running around out here. They're going to want a motorcycle. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's get to your prize segment, man. We'll have some fun right there. Uh, let's spin the wheel. 
See what you get. Make sure you send me your email address so I can get it out to you. Info at yeah, uh, Harley Liver or not. Oh no. <laughs> Info at insane throttle uh, bikernews.com. You get a new age of uh, biking and brotherhood ebook, my man. Sounds great, Bob. Good talking to you. Love your content. Rock on. I really appreciate you calling in and stuff like that. And it was an awesome conversation. Have a good one. You too, buddy. Now, you know what? Phone line's open, guys. Whoever was calling in, you guys can call again. But uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think this is actually a nail in Harley Davidson's uh, coffin? Because they've been putting a lot of nails in the coffin lately, man. Their sales, I think, was down 30% last year. And the year before, uh, the sales are just trending whoop, going downhill and stuff like that. And if they don't get it together... Uh, I can't just think about it 10 years from now, you know, what the hell is it going to be in 10 years? Are we going to be, uh, on Tron cycles and stuff, or, you know, are you going to have, uh, these, uh, twin bikes with a Harley name with electric engines and stuff like that? You know, I see where they're going. They're trying to be industrial leaders because they got the dealership infrastructure for the charging stations. So I, I, I don't know, man. I really don't. But uh, let's go into the chat room. You guys can call in if you want and ask questions. Uh, you know, this Harley thing just got me what went over my freaking head there, man. But uh, what do you got here? I want a prize, goddammit. Well, you got to call in, Mr. Perfect. Get on the phone and I'll give you a prize. <laughs> I just want a t-shirt. <laughs> well, they're gonna, the t-shirts will be available uh, at the end of the month. Again, Dirty Sam Productions are working on it right now. And uh, we're going to get them out ASAP. They're going to be black. Got the uh, Motorcycle Madhouse logo on it. And they look tits, man. Uh, he really did a damn good job and uh, shit on that. Putting, uh, uh, filling out the logo, getting that uh, finish. Yeah, I should get a Save the Pink Taco t-shirt. Let me tell you. <laughs> Beer's empty. <laughs> be right back. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, everybody asking about... Uh, the beer thing and above the super chat, that's for super chat. You can uh, make a donation to the channel, and that goes into fun to better the show, get better equipment and stuff like that. And it shows your name and shit like that, so it's a good thing. <laughs> You're on air. What's up, buddy? How are you? How are you? Sinister, what's up, my man? <laughs> I just got off work. I caught your little segment here with that with Harley going underneath here. What's going on with that, man? Man, do you see that freaking thirty thousand dollars for a damn electric bike that only goes one hundred and ten miles? And holy shit! Then the other models that I put up earlier, they look like nineteen oh three. What the? What is going on? Uh, you know what, man? It's just a wave of the future. They're just trying to get ahead of everybody. Trying, to, you know, they're working with those Japs and shit. They're, they're trying to figure out shit, how fast they can go and how much they can get, you know, just on electricity and shit, like the electric cars and shit, man. They're trying to get ahead of the game. Yeah, but the zero. I don't, I don't, he's not going to go any fucking place, you know. They, they're, there's clubs all over the world now. You know, so they're, they're shipping everywhere. And if they got their factories in Japan or wherever, China, they're, they're going to sell their parts no matter what. Probably get them even cheaper and shit and send them here to the United States and all kinds of crap. But they're going to try to get ahead of the game, man. We got guys that uh, on our side that ride bikes. I got a Busa, and I heard somebody say, you know, the jet bikes are junk. Get on my jack bike, man. That motherfucker blows some shit up, dude. Ain't nobody catch me on that motherfucker. Oh, man, I, but, love, I love abuse. Man, it sucks that they discontinued it, them idiots. Well, they were going to come out with the new booster with the fucking turbo on it. And, um, you know, I actually have an 04, but it has the 99 motor in it, which is unrestricted. And then I got a bunch of shit in the motor, a bunch of shit in the, you know, the bike itself, what you know, so it's fast as fuck. What do you got in the motor? Um, um, my buddy, he, he put a bunch of stuff, he built the motor, put a kid in and stuff, so he said it was a 14 something. I don't know exactly, he had a whole list of shit, and I lost the fucking list. Um, I actually, I got nitrous on it, I got fucking, uh, Power Commander 5. Um, 
I had my buddy Ricky who works on bikes out in Gary. This guy is phenomenal. You know, I take it to his house, pull in his garage, man. He's got four or five bikes that he's working on by himself in the garage, you know. And he works on just jack bikes and shit, but Suzuki's is his shit. He knows Suzuki's like it ain't nothing. He fixed my bike, got it running. He took it for a ride. And he said, when he hit fifth gear on the expressway, he said, it was like you had a whole other fucking stick of gear that was just waiting. He goes, it was going so fucking fast. He goes, this is one of the fastest boosts I've been on. He said, man, you be careful with this thing. I said, shit, wait till I come to your house and test ride it. Man, I laid a fucking patch all the way down this fucking block. His neighbors came out. They didn't even know what they were like. What the fuck was that? What do you got, you know, in, the, like, what do you got in the quarter mile on it? You know what? My buddy wants me to bring it to the track this summer down to 41 in Morocco. And I, I want to see how fast it can go. But I got to level up and wear my gear and put my helmet and boots and everything on to run it. But I really want to test run it on 41 and see how fast this fucker is. The guy who sold to me out in Bradley, he was out by Cake and Key and all that, he hated to get rid of it. And his one friend kept telling him, man, now you can buy your Harley. You, you can buy your Harley now. And he, and he looked like he was ready to cry. And every time I would post my bike, like it would be on Chicago United Riders or something, I was out with some guys or something, he would go, I fucking missed that bike. He would write it right out of the thing, you know? <laughs> That's all bad for the guy. I'm like, this guy must want me to throw it back to him. But I'm not. You got to keep that. that. Yeah, you got to keep that shit, man. I, you know, I raced one of my guys um, right on 30, man, on Governor's Highway over there. And um, he has the X-14. We broke off the line. He fucking thought he had me, man. He got me about a half a bike, and I came past the first gear, smoking that back wheel blew right past him. We got, I hit second gear, I, I left his fucking ass. All of a sudden, the cops are there. We both broke the bike down. He goes, man, I thought I fucking had you. I go, man, you ain't never had me, man. I said, once this motherfucker grabbed I said, that was it. You're done. <laughs> yeah, but, those X-14s, man, they always said it was a Busa killer. I, I never believed that, man. Dude, the only thing that said, my 750 fucking blew his fucking ZX-14 away. <laughs> <laughs> I got, you know, I got my Harley, too. I like, don't get me wrong, it's a soft tail, but it's got, totally it's got motor work in that, too. And it seems like it's pretty quick for a Harley. Right. Um, I like it. You know, it's a heavier bike. It's, it runs good. It's American made. So I like, you know, I mean, Molly, go out, we go cruising on that thing. And she's more used to Harleys. She's not too used to being on crash rackets. But when she gets on, she's like, it's a whole different ball game on these fucking things. She goes, you just in and out of traffic like it ain't shit. I go, it's like a big piece of plastic you're on, you know, with sitting on a motor. Well, I tell you what, man, when I had the Katana, I, I, like I said, I had that for a play toy, you know, because the racing scene, you know. Here, well, those that don't know, out in Chicago, you can make a damn lot of money in the racing scene. And oh, definitely. when I hit 160, I said, yeah, it's time to freaking put this baby away. So this I'm going to get killed on this I, whole thing. I, I literally raced the same dude. Um, I was mean, going down to Kansas City on I-57. They they got all brand new paved blacktop. And he pointed at me when 150, and we were doing 150 because my gauge is fucked up. At 150, I waved to him and fucking blast off. And I and I just watched him fucking get smaller and smaller in my fucking mirror. <laughs> and there was a semi, and I want to say that semi was about a good two or three miles ahead of me. I caught up to him so fucking fast, dude, that I realized, motherfucker, you're probably doing two something. So I, I kind of like started slowing down, you know, and I'm like, fuck, if he pulled out in front of me, I'd have been dancing in that fucking semi, you know? Right. But it's a fast bike, and, and Harley, you know, a couple of our guys got V-Rods, and I really like the V-Rods, you know? And if you look at some of the, have you ever heard of Pinster? It's called, it's like they show pictures, you can look at bikes, you can look at whatever, you know? But Pinster, they got some badass Harleys on there that are V-Rods, and they're just customized, and that thing is bad as fuck, you know? Well, you know what? Um, I think that was one of Harley's mistakes was the V-Rod, man, because they actually had a lot of the younger generation hooked on that bike. It, man, I'm telling you what, I like the style of it, you know? I don't know what it is. It's just, it's a neat-looking bike, you know? 
there's a lot of Harleys out there, and, and people are going to continue, you know, because a lot of the clubs, you have to have a Harley, you know, to be in them. They're not going to be like, man, you better get out of here with that fucking uh, Honda Goldwing or whatever the fuck you got. You know, a lot of them want you to have fucking Harley, you know? Right, right. And, um, and they're, you know, they Harley's going to make their money. Yeah, they are trendsetters and stuff like that. But uh, as the caller from Colorado said, a lot of the clubs are going to, you know, it is what it is, you know, as long as it has two wheels and a certain CC. I don't know, man. I'll tell you what. I could ride from Beecher all the way out, way the fuck out that way. And I'll, and I'll see a lot of Harley riders. And, you know, you throw each other deuces and shit, you know, to show some love that you're on two wheels. Right. A lot of the Harley guys don't show respect to the guys that are on the jet bikes. You know, and some of the jet bikes don't show love to the guys that are on Harley because I've been on both ends, you know? Right, right. And it's like, we're both still out here doing the same thing, buddy, you know? Illinois, it, it seems like, has gotten pretty bad for that. But you got a lot of... These new riders that are on Harleys and shit, you know, brand new ones, what you call the rubs, and um, the they're out there, and they don't even understand nothing. They just look at you like, yeah, I got a, you know, $60,000 bike, and you're on a fucking $10,000 $10, bike. Well, come on over here and see if you can catch this $10,000 bike, you know? <laughs> right. But they don't, they don't want no part of that. Exactly. Um, you know, it's, it's all in fun, you know? I I like fucking Harley. You know, I'm always going to like Harley, even though they're fucking up. But, I mean, it is what it is. You know, Harley Davidson's always going to be around. And Let's hope so. Like you know, said, man. With them sales, man, they, I couldn't believe how much they were down last year. Man, it, I mean, it could, be, it could be anything, though. You know, they could be down one minute, and all they got to do is get a fucking niche. Something that they can fucking get a niche in. And you'll see the fucking sales go through the roof. If the people are smart, they would buy the stocks for their low and grab them. Because you never know. Harley might have something that they got behind the scenes and they just didn't unveil it yet. And they're going to say, look what we got. Ha, ha, ha. And motherfuckers will be like, damn, that's a badass bike. And all of a sudden, you see everybody buying it and their stocks go back to the fucking roof again. Oh, that's just, you know? you know what? I just looked in the chat room, man, and one percenter is uh, right on the freaking mark. Uh, he went, yeah, you're right, Ironhead, and much to those crotch rockets, but those ladies on the back, you got to admit, man, the crotch rocket scene has the best-looking ladies. Hey, 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 my ladies right here, she'll even tell you, babe, what are you showing when you're on the back of my crotch rocket? Oh, my G-string? <laughs> oh, you hear that? You're damn right. It's <laughs> G-string, baby. <laughs> hey, I don't need to be on the back of with them little short fucking short pants or, you know, the little short jeans and that fucking thong hanging out that motherfucker. Guys in cars be beefing and shit trying to catch up to me. I lost my ass off. And you know what's funny is, you know, we used to be like that with Harley Davidson. Now we're a bunch of old guys, man. What happened to us? Hey, man, we still could do it. We still could do it. Shit, I tell my old lady, show them titties. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You, you know? You, you know, you with the Rough Riders and stuff, so you get to experience two different uh, type of sets, the Harley set and the Rocket set. And uh, you know, yeah. let, our, let our audience know the difference between the Rocket set and the Harley set because you guys have some badass parties on the Rocket set. Yeah, we have some we have some crazy ass girls out there. They, they, they're out there dancing around and having fun, and uh, you know, every I think it's all the same. You know, everybody parties, and just in general, that's what you do is you go out there and you have a good time. You know, you have a good time with your family, your friends, other club members. You know, you just and you meet more people, and um, you know, they race here and there, and they get street creds and stuff. You know, who's faster and who, who's beat who. Um, sometimes, you know, it's just out just to have a good time and just have a good laugh, you know? Right. And out riding, sometimes we'll get together and on a Sunday we'll just go out and go out for a long ride, you know, just to get it out of our system to go, you know, get that, that rush, you know, especially in the summertime, springtime, whatever. Well, it seems like in the spring it runs a little bit better, but, um... 
Well, you know what? Yeah. I know Harley used to be sexy, man, but that shit ain't sexy as anymore compared to that rocket scene, man. I I always tell the older guys who uh, bitch and complain about the rockets, I turn around and say, you yeah. know what? If we were twenty years old again, we'd be riding the damn things. But I tell you what, there, I still ride, man. I'm gonna be forty five years old next month. I still ride my rocket, but you know what? My my booster, it's it's a candy red, which. I want to get to you just a solid black. My old man told me, you're crazy. He said, you know, people can't see them black bucks. And I said, well, that's probably the point, you know? <laughs> he goes, yeah, okay. And he likes getting house the colors and painting his bikes. My dad is like 67, 68 years old, right? And he still rides the old KZ 1000s. He builds them. And he's got the, the, he's got the 900 one. You know, he's got some custom paint jobs. He's actually got a llama guy. Uh, Rico that's getting ready to paint his other bike and um, you know my dad's got like different color paint jobs for each bike he builds you know and sometimes he builds them just to sell them and put them outside just for fun you know and turn around and sell them right and um, you know it's just his thing um, he's always like old Kawasaki you know I show him my bikes and he's like man I'm, that's a nice ass bike I show him the heart and he's like I don't know about those oil week and mother. I go, well, they don't week oil like they did back then, you know? Right. And, and he, he just laughs, you know? And he's like, yeah. And then he hears it and he goes, oh, that thing sounds nice. I go, yeah. I think it sounds good. Well, you brought you know, up, you know, you, know, you, you brought up uh, Llama, man. Uh, one of my ex bosses back in the day was Rainy Garcia, man. He's out, he was out of Southside back then. But, uh, okay. you know, the low rider scene, because I'm also into the low rider scene and shit like that. You know, yeah. just that scene alone and, you know, mixed with uh, the custom builders and the airbrush artists, uh, that's, yeah. that's you know, the biker lifestyle I love right there, you know. Yeah, that, that guy Reco, the one who's with the llamas for Indiana, he does all that airbrushing and stuff. And that dude, man, he draw whatever you want on that motherfucker. If you call it a picture, he airbrushes it all on there, and then he clear coats or however he gets it on there. But he can do anything you want, man, and he does some really good work. Man. You know, there's guys I've seen that pulled up with Dusa just like mine, and he had, like, you know, the Sith from Dark Vader. Right. He had that on there. He had Dark Vader on there. I mean, he had all kinds of crazy shit on there, and I'm like, what the and, and it was all airbrushed and looked identical, you know, to all the pictures and everything, you know. Well, you talk but, about those old KZs, man. Them old KZs, you could do anything with as far as customizing them. Yeah, well, you got Joe at Performance Cycle over here in Calumet. Mm. He's got two of them fully rebuilt sitting up there in his shop, and he's got them both for sale, man. They just sit up there. He's got a purple one, and he's got, I think, a candy red one. And they're both sitting in his shop, you know, for sale. He, he has a lot of little scooters and stuff that he sells, you know, because in Indiana, he can ride little scooters. But um, <laughs> you don't need a license for him, you know. But the, the KZs he's got in there, I mean, KZ, the parts alone are just hard to get. Right. So a lot of people are collecting them, and it's going to cost you some money to get them suckers now because they're not producing them anymore, you know? You just you got to look around and shop around. If you find bikes and shit, you usually try to pick them up just for the parts, well, you know? Well, a lot of them, yeah, you got to pick them up at the swap meets and stuff like that, or you got to go back to fabricating the parts now. Right, right, right. But, yeah, man, you better spin that wheel for me because I want to win a book. I'm about to right now, man. Let's see here. Let's, <laughs> let's give her a spin. I hear it. You got the I.O. book, man. The year that changed uh, the motorcycle club scene. Awesome, man. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Send me uh, your uh, your email address, uh, Sinister, and I'll get you a personalized uh, signed copy of New Age Biker Brotherhood, man. Dude, right on. Thank you so much. Rock and roll, buddy, man. I appreciate you calling. That's awesome. Oh, no problem. No problem. I love sitting here chit-chatting with you. Uh, man, I need to bring you on as a co-host, man. We to kick it. <laughs> we can kick it all the time. We don't even have to be on the air. <laughs> Rock and roll, man. Hey, you better talk to your old lady into getting out there on the second over at uh, Pheasant Run. If not, man, I'll see you in Rosemont. Rosemont, you'll definitely see. Man, I love going there. The Stevenson Convention Center over there. I'm looking at all the bikes and F-bombers. 
That farmer's got some badass bikes, dude. I like watching her checking out their bikes. He's got one where he shoots flames and shit out of that thing. Um, well, you know what? Been in well, you know what we'll do, man. Is uh, let me know what entrance you're gonna go in because I got press passes, man. I'll bring you in as a cameraman. Oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, we'll get in there before the damn thing opens. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Rock and roll, man. I had my buddy, Rick, my buddy Ricky's going to bring like two bikes in there. He wanted to bring my boost in there, but I told him I got a chip on the side that I need to get painted. And he's like, oh, man, he goes, I'd love to bring your red booster in there. And I'm like, nah, I can't bring it in there. He's like, what about the Harley? I go, nah, the Harley's put up already, you know. <laughs> but the bikes that they have, man, at the shows, I love taking pictures of them, checking them out. And uh, they got some really nice bikes up there. They're custom paint jobs and stuff. And oh, yeah. There's just so much there, man. You're just walking around checking everything out, you know? It's huge, man. It's a huge convention center, and it's all about the fun that weekend, man. Oh, yeah. It's a good time. It's a really good time. All right. Well, cool. I like the one that you're checking it out. Well, but I'll definitely get a hold of you to get that. Cool. Yeah, you'll have to come in with me, man, but I'll get you in with the press pass. Okay, cool. Uh, go ahead and uh, text me your uh, email address after uh, we get off uh, line here, and I'll uh, send you that stuff out. All right, man. I want to say, hey, everybody, take care, man. It was good to see all you guys all lined up on there. Hey, that iron, hey, that iron guy. Mr. Perfect out there saying Rough Riders can't even read, man. What's up with that? <laughs> No problem, can't read. <laughs> you better leave my education alone, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this is Southside. Southside? <laughs> so I'm from the, I'm from the Wild Hunters, motherfucker. Rock and roll, man. All right, man, I'll get you, uh, I'll get you on the back end, man. All right, I'll talk to you later, Hollywood. All right, buddy. All right, man, we are coming up on the close of the show. If you want to call in and take a spin of the wheel, you can. Uh, if you guys have called in and already uh, got your spin of the wheel, go ahead and make sure you get me your email address, info at insanethrottlebikernews.com, or go on the channel and uh, – You'll see the email stuff. Hey, where's my girls out there? We got Lori in here. We got my uh, Southern Belle. I call Lori my Southern Belle. And we got Pam. How you doing, Pam? Rock on. Shaman Taylor just got your, uh, let's see here. What do we do here? Did I miss your call? Yeah, I missed your call, man. If you want to call back in, go ahead, man. I got a couple more minutes. Uh, let you spin the wheel. Hopefully, uh, you guys enjoyed the show today, talking nothing but shop. And the video for uh, the bike that the tramps are working on is my bike. And let me tell you, it took a lot of trust to let uh, Andy over there take my bike away on that trailer. But uh, he's going to be putting on 18-inch apes and doing some other stuff to it. And uh, looking forward to the video, seeing how they go and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Mr. Perfect, if you want to call in, go ahead and call in. You can. Tony, any of you. If not, we are going to be going down and closing down the show in a couple minutes if no calls are coming in. Matheus, how you doing? John Handy can. FTWNYC, how you doing, buddy? Save the... Oh, oh I didn't get the message. I got... Uh, Let's see here. We can text messages, man. I can't take your text messages on air. <laughs> anyway, man, it's been a hell of a night. Pammy, tramps seem legit. Yeah, they are. It's a hell of a show, let me tell you. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, they are a hell of a guy. I'm getting text messages while I'm going here, but uh, <laughs> I'm the Colorado guy. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, but anyway, guys, I really appreciate you guys uh, visiting us today. Sorry about uh, yesterday. Had some shit going on over the weekend, uh, but some personal stuff. But uh, doing a lot better now. But uh, I'll take you guys and uh, see you guys later. Thanks, everybody, for the Super Chat lives. And those that are on uh, Facebook. No, wait a second. You're on air. You just made it. Oh, I just made it. Hey, what's up? Hey, Hollywood. What's up, Mad buddy? Respect to you. Hey, not much, not much. Hey, this Dan. What's hey, up, man? Hey, mad respect to you, man. Mad respect to you and your channel. Uh, and all the writers out there, man, that's on tools. 
Rick, you know what I'm rock on, man. Really appreciate you calling in, buddy. How's Georgia right now? Oh, man. We got over some, some rainy weather and stuff, man. But, hey, we rain, we ride in any kind of weather. You feel me? I ain't rock on, man. Season and stuff, man. It's a year-round ride, but... Well, you guys are well, lucky, yeah, man. man. Up here in Illinois, man, we either go freaking rain, freezing rain, or, you know, 10 feet of snow. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, man, it just be raining all kinds of ways over here. But other than that, man, to go ahead and get my little two cents in upon this little, this little wannabe, uh, I think, jacked up Harley or whatnot they trying to put out and stuff like that, man. man that's messed up, ain't it? Oh, messed up ain't the word. You feel me? Uh, let's see here. I'm pretty sure that I'm like, uh, I probably, you probably got like maybe 20, 20 years on me or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I but, got a little uh, bit of time. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But uh, How old are being, you? Shoot, man, I'm, I'm here. I'm reaching 30, man. Oh, man, you're just still a baby. <laughs> Shit. Hey, but that's all right, though. But I always uh, grew up around Hardys and stuff like that. And you know what I mean? Um, and my whole family rides anyways. So uh, Crotch Rockets, you know what I'm saying? They ride uh, Honda Shadow. You know what I mean? Um, of course, me, I, I got I got a Harley myself. But, however, you know, with the moves they making with this, this, this bike, Yo, a lot of concerns is basically being uh, arose from the situation. You know what I mean? Right. What if somebody's going, you know, what if somebody decides to go ahead and take that bike across country, you feel me? And they're taking it through the desert, let alone there's barely any gas station. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, you got so, exactly right there because some deserts, man, you're going 200 miles between gas stations. Right, right, right. So how you gonna how you gonna do it? You know what I'm saying? Carry an extra battery in, in your in, in your pack. You know what I'm saying? It, I mean, it makes it makes no sense to me. It, it, they've gotten away from their their traditions and their ways. You know what I mean? And they're get they're basically handing the Indians to their uh, handing Indians their you know what I'm saying the profit. Yeah, they're handing Indian, Indian the market share now. Correct. Correct. Yeah. You know, and I don't understand somebody who would be stupid enough to pay 30 G's for that bike. Nah, 30 G's is outrageous right now, man. I'll be honest with you. Um, it makes no sense. You know, not everybody has that kind of money to go ahead and drop for, for something that is not going to get you as far on the road as, or just for somewhat of a bit of entertainment. You know what I mean? Uh, even around, let's say, around a city, you know, no, most cities, are, if you stay in a bigger city or even out in a smaller city, you know what I'm saying, or a little town, you know, you got to make those miles, right? Your, your miles add up and stuff like that, you know, around the area. Right. So you're going to end up losing battery anyway. Well, especially so, you know in a, I mean? you know, especially in a, a place like Chicago or Atlanta or L.A., New York, mm -hmm. you're sitting in that damn traffic and yeah, it might say you're getting 110 miles to a charge, but when right. you're sitting in the damn damn traffic, that's just draining that battery. Right, right, right. So you know, it's an idiotic push that 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 Harley is, Harley Davidson is doing. Like you said, the CEO. You know, I mean, uh, that that's that's all comes down to greed, man. Um, that is, especially people at the, at the top like that. That's all they worried about is money, and once they find out that they they're not gonna reach their their sales, you know what I mean? They're gonna end up backing off, crumble up, you know, or you know, everybody's looking towards uh other market. You feel me? Right. Um like like myself, you know what I mean? Shit. Hey, these Harleys is like like many people are saying, their price is uh a new vehicle. You know what I mean? Right. So it's a way of life, it's a lifestyle but you, there's a, there's a, a give or take for that lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But, you know, I I know I know I'm not buying another Harley in anytime soon. 
No, uh, my my day. my old one is my last one, man. Then I'm going probably with India. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel you on that one. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm probably going. Look, I'm I'm, I'm be honest. I'm looking more towards Indian than anything else. The the, the what is it? Dark horse. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, them are some beautiful damn bikes right there. Oh, oh, most definitely. Where your windshield, or even the windshield comes up and down. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, exactly. So they're getting tricked out and shit. But however, you know what I'm saying? I just go ahead and put my little two cents in. You feel me? Uh, Let's get your prize segment for calling in, man. I appreciate you calling in. Let's get that prize segment going in first before we I let you go. Oh man, Let's spin yeah, that. that's cool. That's cool, man. Uh, Let's I spin that wheel. Oh, everybody gets uh, a prize when they call into this show. You got a new age of uh, biking and brotherhood ebook. Don't forget to email me your email address so I can send that over to you, man. But you know, you calling in on the show is awesome. I love the participation from the audience, and you made a lot of sense, man. Especially when you were talking about uh, how it would lose charge in the bigger cities just sitting there in traffic. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. But I want to go ahead and leave you guys with this, man. All the older generation helped pave the way for us younger generation. You feel me? And I'm getting mad respect for it. All the older cats, man. Everybody that's on tools, you know what I mean? Hey, go ahead and stay on tools, man. Keep the rubber side down and uh, just ride, you feel me? Rock on, man. I appreciate you calling in, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Much respect. You too, buddy. Oh, Pam, you do not have to be scared to talk to me. Come on, man. I'll walk you through the whole thing. So if you want to call in tomorrow, me and you will talk tomorrow, Pammy. Hey, how about my Southern Belle? When my Southern Belle going to call in? But uh, anyway, guys, uh, we're at the hour mark. I really appreciate uh, you guys sticking up with me. And uh, for the donations, again, those are awesome. Uh, again, Dominic, man, you got my heart there, man. That was awesome of you guys. And uh, so tomorrow, I will talk to you later. The topic will be up probably tomorrow afternoon or something like that. I'm just going to check around. And another thing, like Long Rider did, he sent me ideals for uh, topics you like to discuss. Or if you got something you want to say, you want to come on the show, you want me to interview you, come on. This is your show, man. This ain't just about me. This is about everybody. So the show gets better with the audience participation and stuff like that. But with that, I will talk to you guys later. I hope you have a safe day. Uh, it's not you. I'm scared of Hollywood. You do not have to be scared of Hollywood, Pammy. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, Southern Bell, and all you guys out in uh, the chat room. I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, <laughs>